race at 2, 3 in the morning with my wife to the cliff house. On the beach, ocean beach, it's pitch black. You can't see anything. Now, you know the cliff house. If you go over those at that edge, you're gone. You're gone. The rocks are there, you'll get cut up, and you will be taken by the current, and you will be dead, no doubt about it. So I'm looking over into darkness, thinking she's gone. I missed her. I'm crying my eyes out. My wife is holding me. Awesome. And that's, you know, you and your father and, and other people coming together to make this people, happen. A lot of mental health organizations in North America, American Prevention for Suicide Prevention, San Francisco Suicide Prevention, the Psychiatric Prevention, and going on and on. There's a thousand of these people that work tirelessly every single month to go to that board of the Golden Gate Bridge and say, stop it. And yeah. they, they, didn't, they didn't make the final decision until the president of the board who owns and runs the bridge, bureaucrats with lots of money who lobby for politicians, who own a seat on that board, and literally, it's the only privately owned American bridge. Johnny Mullen was uh, was the president at the time of the change, and he did not vote for us in favor of the net until his nephew and grandnephew died off the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow, and that's that, that's that's something that a lot of people, you know, can't relate to <clears throat> until something tragic so like happens. that happens. And yeah. you, and like I said. You and, and three people that I know jumped. My uncle tried to jump. He was stopped by an iron worker, saved his life. Um, so, so from that movie, then a, a book, right? Yeah, yeah. From from the bridge, uh, everyone kept saying to me, "Why don't you write a book? Why don't you write a book?" And I thought, "I don't want to write a book. I don't, I don't know how to write a book." And then a book was written about me, and it was terrible. Nobody knows this. There's a book written about me that was completely inaccurate and terrible. And that guy still has that book and he can still publish it. He hasn't published it yet. Do me a favor, buddy. Don't publish it. It's not your story. It's mine. You know, that might make him angry, but he was a great writer. He was a great writer. But he hurt my family with that book. It wasn't necessary to do that. We were supposed to, he agreed to tell the story, the story. But then he took all the things I said and told a story about it my horrible relationship with my parents. I don't look at it like that. So it was sensational. It was sensational. It wasn't, it was like a tell-all. Right. And I was like, hey buddy, if you want to damage me, then write this book. And I shut it down. He's very angry. He says, he wrote to me, last time he wrote to me, he said, I can put this book out whenever I want to. So do it. None of it's true. You know? Anyway, not none of it, but he just, he really hurt my family and I just thought that wasn't cool and that's not the book I would write. So I sat down, I wrote a book, it was a, it's a it's a 200 page book roughly. It's a 21 chapter book. I wrote the last chapter in a psych ward, dictating the words to a nurse, but I couldn't physically write because my hand would shake so much because of my meds. Wrote the last two chapters in the psych ward via dictation. At the end of the book is a 10 step guide to the art of wellness: how to maintain positive mind, brain, behavioral, mental, and spiritual well-being, and stay away from suicide for the rest of your life. That has turned into a 12 video series on my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Kevin Hines and subscribe and click that bell. Uh, and that YouTube series is the most popular YouTube series on my channel. It's 10 steps, 12 videos, three minutes each, easily digestible on how to better your brain health with common sense tools and techniques that are proven to change your life. So that book accomplishes two things. It, it, it has a vehicle to help people, but how about the process of actually writing it, did it help yourself? Oh my God, uh, writing that book and speaking around the world has been the single most therapeutic thing I've ever done in my life. If I never go back to therapy for the rest of my life, I will be fulfilled and happy just by talking about this in a way that I have closure. The people always ask me, isn't it hard to talk about this? Yes, it's hard to tell a one hour speech about the most painful actions that have ever occurred to me. Right. But the reaction to the final speech, the standing ovation, which isn't what's relevant, the standing ovation of people that are standing for themselves saying, I'm never going to take my life. At the end of every speech, after I gave that line I told you about, or the kids say, hope and heal, right? After that, at the very end of the speech, I do a chant with the, with the entire audience, every audience, what doesn't matter what age or what kind of audience. I say, repeat after me. My name, your name, repeat after me. Kevin. Victoria. I will. I will. Never. Never. Die. Die. By my hands. By my hands. I will fight the pain. I will fight the pain. In spite of the pain. In spite of the pain. To thrive today. To thrive today. I deserve. I deserve. This life. This life. Until my natural end. Until my natural end. And then I say this by myself. I say, uh, Jack Ryan, 
lived eight weeks and no more. My son was not intended to be here in physical form. You all are, for the simple fact that I can look in your beautiful eyes. I know you're supposed to be here. Till the day you die of natural causes. And then I have everyone in the room say this. And it screws me, I say, for all the people in that kind of pain, for all the people in that kind of pain in this very room, if you are in, or you, if you are physically capable right now, please stand. And repeat after me at the top of your lungs. Be here tomorrow. I coined that phrase. Be here tomorrow, meaning be here tomorrow and every day after that, no matter what. I have individuals who now take the tattoo design from a woman named Mary, contrary to Mary, who draw a, a design with my sea lion. There's a sea lion on my t-shirts that I sell. It's Herbert the sea lion saved my life. On the sea lion, it usually says be here tomorrow on the shirts, but she took the sea lion, the black sea lion, colored it in with beautiful flowers. And now that is a tattoo on, at the very least, 20 different people around the world. Wow. Be here tomorrow. It says be here tomorrow on her calligraphy writing, and it's the sea lion with flowers, and people are getting the tattoo left and right. And that is, we're not encouraging tattoos, that's not the point. Yeah. You know, take a sticker, make a decal, do whatever you want with that. Just take it and put it somewhere so you look at it. When you look at it, you stay. Right. And that is the, re the reaction, the response to this message, and that is why we're evidence-based science informing. We do it in a way that reaches the, the brain through the art of storytelling and science of storytelling and absolutely augments a pattern in the brain that helps you save your life. So, from the work of writing a book, publishing a book, what do you, what do you think the, the positives and challenges came from after you published that book? The positives are that of the amount of people that say the book, the film, the bridge, uh, the film Suicide, the Ripple Effect we just made out around the world, uh, the YouTube videos, the positive effect is how many people around the world are constantly telling me thousands at a time that this saved or changed or brought them back to face. Right. Life changed life. The negative effects of any kind of heightened awareness on who you are are the trolls and the people that hate people that help people. And that's the thing. There are a lot of people that hate people, that hate help people. And I, I don't quite understand that. But it seems like you're able to look past that. I look past it. Remember when I told you At that, first it's tough. Remember when I told you I would write back, screw you, or my, yeah. my dad would write back, go, you know, go fuck, you know, get out of here. My sister would write. I have, I have expressed to everyone in my team, do not respond to hate. Right. People hate other people because they hate themselves. And that is a personal problem I want nothing to do with. Right. So if you're going to come out and shame me or hate me, guess what? You can't. I'm right. shameless. <laughs> I'm hateless. If you hate me, I'm going to love you. Yeah. And I'm going to express that I love you and I'm going to express that you need help. And I will. If you hate me and you want to publicly talk to me, I will come to you and try to help you be less hateful. Yeah. No, that's great. That's a great attitude. And it, because you're not fueling it, you're, yeah. you're putting an end to it. So I'm just trying to cover all the different medias you, kind of, uh, you hit. So, so you went from being into public speaking, the book, uh, the bridge, the book. Now you published your own documentary, and uh, can you talk a little bit how, how that came along? Suicide the Ripple Effect came about, uh, found at suicidetheripplefect.com. You can host your own screening free of charge anywhere in the world, and you can raise all the money for the ticket sales it goes to a foundation of your choice. Any foundation doesn't have to be mental health or suicide. We've raised over $500,000 for charities all around the world. That's amazing. Just do the ticket sales of that book, that film. So anyone? Anyone, anywhere. In the world. Can use can, your can, film. Can go to suicide, yeah, they can go to suicidetherippleeffect.com. They can look to see where the film is playing in their area. And they can click on a button to internationally show the film or to locally show the film in America or any, any state in the country. Um, and they have. They're doing it left and right. It, it, it has been out since March 13th. It's been seen by between fifty and 60,000 people in 40 different countries. That's amazing. And the film has been credited now with saving over... The film has now been credited with saving over 200 lives. As in the individual is going to kill themselves, said to themselves, I'm going to go see this stupid movie and see if it does anything for me, and they stay. That's great. Um, which is what we wanted to happen. We want to make a hopeful film about suicide. So uh, that movie uh, is out now, and that's great, and it's helping a lot of people. Um, and then after the movie now, you've gone, which you haven't, you didn't really have a, a, a big social media presence. No. So since then, you, you've well, moved Well, since a very particular person helped me, Right. Uh, I did a video with Logan Paul. I'm on his podcast in a couple weeks. I did a, Logan, a video with Logan Paul, uh, a, a, a PSA, after he went to the Japanese forest and inappropriately filmed a dead body. 
and hurt a lot of people emotionally, uh, which he didn't mean to do. He's a, he's a 22-year-old kid. What, did you ever make a mistake when you were 22? Uh, many. <laughs> many. Let's leave it at that. I did too. He was 22 years old when it happened, made a mistake, a big mistake, a very, very vocal, loud mistake that everyone saw, and everybody hated him. Over 2 million people wrote to Logan Paul and told him to kill himself. The very same people that hated that he showed some of suicide wrote to him to kill himself. How hypocritical is that alone? Right. Right. He's a 22-year-old man. If he was less resilient, he'd be dead right now. Probably more people told Logan Paul to kill himself than anyone's ever been told to kill himself before in the world. Literally. Numerically. He didn't kill himself after 2 million people told him to. What he did was he made a video with John Draper of the National Suicide Bridge Lifeline. And he asked John Draper in the video which he shot before he met me, who can I talk to that's been through something like this? And John Draper called me and said, you're going to get a call from Logan Paul. Logan Paul's people called me. They said, come to my house. This is the address. I went to the address. I sat down outside of Logan Paul. We spoke for three hours about nothingness, about life, about our dreams and passions before we ever talked about suicide. We sat out in his backyard in very particular chairs and he asked me very particular questions to elicit very particular responses. It is the most watched suicide prevention PSA in the world and it's on my YouTube channel. Of course, it's on his. It's called Be Here Tomorrow. I named it. He let me. And since then, my social media um, awareness has, uh, on Instagram, it, it, it uh, more than 10 times the Instagram feed. Did the same thing for uh, Twitter. Did a similar thing for Facebook. Because of Logan Paul's reach, I gained his, a, a portion of his following. And all of those kids write to me today that love Logan Paul so much and say how our video saved their life. Well, that's 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 an inspiring story that thank you, Logan, and, oh, that most people don't know about because just, he became famous yeah. because of that that incident because of that mistake. Yeah. He was uh, already pretty famous. This this really propelled. Like, this really made that, him be, mad, that, made, that made, him, made him infamous. Well, it made him mainstream famous because I had no idea who he was. Sure. And it was it was covered on mainstream media. Yeah, yeah. And, right, right. Uh, um, but for him to take that that incident and, and turn it around and now it help people and for him to endure from that mistake, it, that and that goes to show you that <coughs> this is all new technology that yeah. that you're utilizing that he's u- utilizing. And when you make a mistake, it's hard to erase that mistake. It's it's out there, and so it's having to recover from it. Which is a, it's a whole new challenge, uh, and he still has to recover. He, he still gets hate mail regularly from people who are. Very, I mean, the Japanese culture is raped with them. So, you know. So uh, after meeting him, you've opened up these uh, social media channels, which are yeah. which are actively every day. Uh, you know, I follow you, and I see you're uh, you're running, yeah. you're talking, you're inspiring people, you're communicating with people. So you're you're taking what you're doing at your public speaking and you're 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 bringing it into your daily life. You're just sharing that with everyone. Uh, uh, how does that feel for you? And what's uh, the feedback been? I recognize that the fastest way to reach people is through video media. I've changed my Facebook page to be a video page. You you're out, you can do that now. If you don't know your Facebook page, you can be like a YouTube page right now. Just go do it. Um, I changed my Facebook page to a video page because that's what gets the most views and the most likes. We we put out viral videos. Sometimes they're minorly viral, and if they really hit a chord, they're majorly viral. And um, and that video follows with comments. And there's a few, you know, hundred trolls on there somewhere, but there's ten thousand that that say it changed their life. Right. So we're doing the right thing. Just like you've talked about viral curves, that's what this show is called. We are using viral media to augment destinies, dent the universe, and change the world. Yeah, no, it's, it's powerful. So you're taking that feeling that you had when you were on the bus of desperation and what you wanted someone to do was to reach out to you and say, don't, you know, be here tomorrow. Yeah. And you're able to now, you're using a book, a movie, social media. A tattoo. A tattoo. Yeah. You name it, you're you're getting it out yeah. there. and And you're saving lives and you're taking... The media, you're looking beyond the negativity of it, and I think that's something that we, as a society, have to be able to address on how to to better protect people that don't have that resilience. So it's building that resilience, but also building, I guess, inspiration to stop that behavior is a whole other thing. The, the education, but I, you know, I applaud you. I, I admire what you're doing. All right, so. 
you evolved a lot over the years as, as you've been presenting. And I remember we were talking about this when uh, getting you to speak at Reardon and, and, and I was, you know, you were saying, well, what do you think? And I, I talked about, hey, you need to have something that you leave people with. So when you walk away, they have something in their hands, something that they can reach and, and, and stay with them. So how's that evolved for you since then? So this is really crucial. I'm gonna look right at the camera right now. Okay, so Vittorio, my coach, my family, he, he said when I created the 10 Steps to the Art of Wellness, he said, Kevin, this is great to deliver, but what is it? what do you leave behind the audience that has to go home to the people they love who are mentally unstable and not well and not doing well? And I didn't think of anything like that. I didn't think I have to leave them with something so that they can utilize that something in perpetuity so they can continue to save and change their lives, especially now with the rampant running of chronic thoughts of suicide, which sadly will be the, another, its own disease in the, in the DSM-6, the Diagnostic Tool for Mental Health. We'll have its own disease of chronic suicidality, which is terrifying, by the way. Suicide rate has gone up twice in the last two years. Never in human history has that happened before. Lack of resilience, lack of gratitude, and a huge surge in self-esteem uh, damage and self-loathing. Anyway, uh, we'll work on that later. But uh, every single speech I give now, I leave the entire audience with a, a screen grab, which they can take a picture of, of my website and the tools we now promote for mental health, betterment, brain, mind, behavioral health, wellness. That Every single individual in any audience, every audience I'm in, gets an email <coughs> through the organization that booked it of my video, physical, and otherwise resources. So they get a toolkit. So parents get a parent's guidebook to suicide prevention that's science-based evidence informed. Everyone gets to go on youtube.com slash Kevin Hines and go to the playlist, The Art of Wellness, 10 Steps to Better Mental Health that I talked about earlier, the 12 videos, 10 steps, three minutes each, easily digestible, common sense tools to better your mind health for everyone and anyone, no matter their situation. That is being hailed as something that is changing lives all over the world. Uh, everyone at the end of my speech gets my personal contact information. They get my email, my direct email. And here's why. I get inundated every day with thousands of emails, so does my wife. We don't care. We are going to take six to eight months. Every six to eight months, we call through those. Every single person that's in danger or in pain, we write back to. Now, we have to say to them in the speech, it might take me six to eight months to get back to you, so please be patient. We will get to you, and we'll try to reach you as best we can. We have become our own crisis, personal crisis text line. The crisis text line, the, the leader in the field of suicide prevention alongside the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, the tech, more technologically sound one, the crisis text line run by Nancy Lou, a personal friend of mine, gave us our keywords for the crisis text line. Conquer, C-N-Q-R, conquer your pain. Our hashtag is conquer pain, C-N-Q-R, pain. Hashtag that, it's a good one. It's about your courage to talk about your mental health, normalizing the conversation of it, asking the questions, are you suicidal and do you have a plan? Because it doesn't put the thought in their mind, it actually helps them have permission to talk about their pain. And R is for recovery, living proof. And so, conquer your pain using the hashtag conquer CNQR pain. But you can also text CNQR to 741-741, the crisis text line. We have, we have now nearly 400 active rescues. That means um, that somebody writes in CNQR to the crisis text line, just like someone would write help in the crisis text line. And almost 400 lives have been saved through that keyword. And so, so there's there's like a 24 hour... 24 hour counselors from all over the world who work for the crisis text line and they are ready to listen to you in your pain and they're ready to text you because a lot of these kids don't want to talk. That's they amazing. just want, they want instant gratification, instant help, instant hope. And they get it, and they get it through us. Wow, so you've put all this together and this is a, a life changing, powerful tool and medium and you're utilizing all this, the, the new technology to get that word out there. You have complete control of this. Yeah. So. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't want to text the Christ text line. A lot of people don't want to call the lifeline. They want to call me. Mm -hmm. And so I make, I make myself available as often as I possibly can. It's hard, humanly it's, it's hard, possible. It's humanly possible. <laughs> it's hard on my wife. Yeah. Um, because we'll get, we'll get, you know, emergency Instagram calls at three in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. I answer them. If it's an emergency, I answer it. And, and if you're suicidal and you reach out to me on any social media, and you're above 18, I will call you back. I'll call you back and I will be on the phone until you stay alive. And I've done that for countless people in the last, probably more of the last eight years that social media has been kind of wild. First you can have Instagram, Facebook phone calls, then you can have Instagram phone calls, now you can talk to people via Twitter. So now I have multiple social medias coming at me in a way that's so much different than before. Before they'd comment, hey, you're, not, you're a jerk, I hate you, or hey, I love you, thanks for your work. 
uh, hey, you saved my life. But now, now they'll call me on Instagram. I can choose not to answer and answer. If I'm busy, I'm not going to answer. I, I got stuff to do like we all do. But if, if you write to me and say, I'm going to kill myself, you bet I'm calling you back. If you're under 18, I'm going I'm to demand that your parent or guardian be with you on the call. If you're over 18, we can have a conversation, and hopefully I can help change your mind. Do you have to call 911 in some of those? Uh, There's been situations? quite a few instances where I've had to have my wife or someone who's next to me call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. They, because it's official through them, they call the police. The police find the police in that area wherever this person lives. If they give us information, if they don't give us the information, we can't do anything. I've, I, I can't tell you how many phones we've had pinged by the police just to get that, that person to safety. Wow. There was one instance, an actual friend of mine who was in the shooting of the film Suicide Group Effect, but her, she didn't make the cut. Um, and the story goes that that she called me one night. And this is a friend of mine. She was my walk coordinator at the American Foundation for Suicide Branch. Last story. So she calls me. And she says, Kevin, I'm done. I'm going to take my life. And I said, where are you? I'm at a bus stop. What bus stop? I can't tell you. Took me half an hour to get the right bus stop. I send the police there. She's gone. Called back. Where are you? I can't tell you. Linda, please tell me who you are. I want you to live and I care about you. And it'll break my heart if you die today. I'm at the cliff house. I race at 2, 3 in the morning with my wife to the cliff house. On the beach, ocean beach, it's pitch black. You can't see anything. Now, you know the cliff house. If you go over those at that edge, you're gone. You're gone. The rocks are there. You'll get cut up and you will be taken by the current and you will be dead, no doubt about it. So I'm looking over into darkness thinking she's gone. I missed her. I'm crying my eyes out. My wife is holding me. The police run up to us. Now, we've been working with the police all night. They say, we put a spotlight on the beach. She's in the water, uh, waist deep in the water, and we got her. My God. We got her. They take off her clothes, give her a blanket. They take her to the hospital. They pump her stomach. She had some in her stomach. They pump her stomach. She didn't take pills or something. They pump her stomach, and, and she's alive today. She's chronically suicidal. Wow. But guess who she calls every time she's suicidal? <laughs> and she's alive today, and that's the point. That's great. And I'll say this, and I'll end here. Every one of us can help save a life. It's not about what you say. It's not about how you say it. Proving to the individual that they matter. It's about holding compassion, kindness, empathy throughout an entire lack of judgment for their situation. Putting your arm over their shoulder. Saying, I got your back. And I'm not going to let you die by your hands. Because I love you and you matter to me. If you do that, you can save a life just like, I, just like this message has. And you can change the world one day at a time, one person at a time. And what are the, the the people who want to follow you and 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 see what you're all about? What's what's the best way? Yeah, to, let me to let me find you. There's a lot of stuff. And I'll, and I'll put all yeah. these into our, our, our I'll notes give you the too. list, but let me make it really simple. Yeah. At Kevin Hines Story on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. At Kevin Hines Story. That's K E V I N H I N E S S T O R Y. KevinHinesStory.com to see what films we got next. Seventeenth and Montgomery Productions to see what we're working on. And youtube.com backslash Kevin Hines for a video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that will change your life. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing and thanks, spend all this time with me. It's been an honor. Thanks, Coach. It has been an honor. This is the best podcast I've ever been on. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry, Logan. I Sorry, Logan. This is the best podcast <laughs> I've ever been on. I loved your podcast, Logan, but this man means the world to me. And so do you, but it's, a, it's different. Love it. All right. There it is. There we go. There we go. I can't wait to publish these. All right. Can I say one thing to my mom real quick? Sure. Mom. We've had a rough go at it for a few years. I will be there for the rest of your life, whenever you need me. I love you, Mom. You are one of my greatest gifts, and I'm sorry we had some trouble. But uh, I'll be there for you, and not in a self-involved way anymore. I'll be there as your son that you raised, the same one you raised. Love you very much, Mom.